Welcome, Fall Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gurus to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to fetch our recording, mixing and mastering skills. So in today's video, we are continuing along with my Cakewalk series, and Hobbs just joined us here. And uh, we are talking about how to export audio and MIDI within Cakewalk. And we're gonna go over four different scenarios. Um, we're gonna export tracks individually. We're gonna export MIDI as a whole. We're gonna export a finished song, and we are going to export stems. And I have timestamps in the description below where you can fast forward to any of these particular things you wanna see. So I do wanna remind you guys that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosourcer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates and I give 20% off to new customers. And if you guys have liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know and have new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk by BandLab, and today we're talking about exporting audio and MIDI data. So we're first gonna talk about how to export tracks individually. Then we're gonna talk about how to export MIDI as a whole. And then we're gonna talk about how to export a full song. And then lastly, we'll talk about how to export stems. And that should pretty much cover everything you know about exporting audio within Cakewalk. So let's begin. All right, so exporting individual tracks is typically used when we want to send the tracks off to a mix engineer for him to load into his preferred DAW. So the first thing we need to do is we need to highlight the export selection. And what I mean by that is we need to tell Cakewalk, where do you want to start exporting? Where do you want to stop? So the best thing to do is go to wherever your audio ends, even a little bit after, and click up in the section that shows the um, beats and bars and then just drag it all the way to the beginning. It's gotta be all the way to the beginning. It's very important. So what this means is when the engineer gets the audio from us, it, he can just load everything right in and it's gonna start right at bar one and everything's gonna be perfectly aligned. So for the tracks that don't have any audio or um, any data at the beginning, uh, Cakewalk will fill that in with um, silence basically. So the important part about this is that that mix engineer will be able to just throw them in there and they will all align. That is the main reasoning behind this. So once you have your section highlighted, you want to go up to file and then you want to go down to export. You want to go to audio. And in here is where you're going to select all of the tracks. So by default, when you have tracks selected right here, all of these are highlighted. Now, some of these aren't tracks. Some of these are buses and such. So we don't need all of these. So you would want to go through here select all of your tracks. And then you're gonna to wanna to have the same sampling rate and bit depth that your song is currently at. So minus 40 for one, my bit depth is 24. So that's perfect, because we don't wanna do any dithering at this point. We wanna give the mix engineer exactly how it is in our session. You can honestly turn off all of this stuff. Um, you can leave fast bounce on in 64 bit engine if you want, that's no big deal. But the other stuff you don't need, and uh, especially if you have effects currently on here, you definitely want to turn this off because you don't want to send any processed audio to the mix engineer. And then once that is all off and you're ready to go, simply go up here, uh, pick where you want to save it. So I created a um, little export audio folder. Let me find it here. So it's going to be under Cakewalk Projects here. And this song is called Floorboards. So I would choose this folder here because that's what I created it for. And I'm just going to call it exported audio. And then I'm going to hit the export button. And this is what's going to happen. So it's telling you, hey, I'm going to create a WAV file for all of these different tracks. So that's kind of confirming to you that, hey, this is gonna create a WAV file for all this. Everything I want is gonna be there. You can confirm that all the tracks you selected are by reading through this. And then if you hit OK, it's gonna start exporting all those. And then you'll have tracks ready to off to your mix engineer. So that is simply all there is to exporting tracks within Cakewalk. So let's move on to exporting MIDI data. All right, so talking about exporting MIDI data, I don't have a whole lot of scenarios to tell you on why you would use this. So for me, 
I typically use it when I recorded a song per se in Cakewalk, but I want to mix it or finish it in Pro Tools. So maybe I want to actually keep the MIDI data as MIDI and apply the virtual instruments in Pro Tools and not use what I have in Cakewalk. Maybe I don't want to bounce those down to audio. So there's several reasons why um, you may not want to do that, but I'm not going to get into those right now. So what you need to do is you need to go over to File, and then you need to go down to Export, go down to Standard MIDI File, and choose MIDI Format 1, you'll be safe with that, and then give it a name. So what's gonna happen is, if I just call this Floorboards, it's gonna create one file, and that one MIDI file is actually gonna contain all the data for every MIDI track in here, which is actually really cool because when I go to import that MIDI inside of Pro Tools, it's actually going to just populate it all in there for me as blank um, MIDI tracks. And then I can apply my own virtual instruments or whatever within Pro Tools. So that is a little bit theory behind why you may want to export MIDI. And that's really the only reason I can think of, at least for myself. I guess unless you're creating little MIDI songs that were, you know, real popular in like 2000. <laughs> so that's an option too. But uh, yeah, that's all there is to exporting MIDI inside of Cakewalk. So let's move on to actually exporting a full finished song. All right, so for exporting a complete song, our selection is gonna be a little bit different than it was for when we exported individual tracks. So we obviously want our song to start right when it starts and we want to end right after it fades out. So. If I scroll down here to my master fader, you'll see I have some automation and it fades out here at the very end. So we have, you know, clean fade out. Um, I want to select right after that last little ball down there. And then I want to drag it over here. And I want to play just before the song begins. So it begins at measure three. So I would put it just a little bit before it. And that should suffice right there. Now, of course, you can zoom in and fine tune a little bit better, which I'll probably do, but this is good enough for this example. So once you have your selection, go to File, go to Export, go to Audio, and then set of tracks here as your source category. Go to Entire Mix, and it should choose your hardware output. That's basically your audio interface right there. So I'm using my Focusrite, and I'm using output one, which is technically stereo for Cakewalk. And then if this is gonna be for, um, if this is already mastered, say you master in here and you're ready to release it, you wanna send it off to you know be on Spotify and Apple Music, you're gonna to want to um, do your sampling rate at 44.1, your bit depth is gonna be 16, and then you're gonna to need to apply some dithering. So, I mean, any of these are fine. I, I usually tend to go towards uh, POW R3. So that would be fine for that. And then you're gonna wanna have all this stuff checked here, how I have it now. That's gonna make sure that all your effects and all of your mixing, all your automation, all this stuff is applied. So that's, that's definitely what you want. Uh, select your folder, you know, give it a name, my song, and then simply hit export. And that is it. That is all there is to exporting a complete song within Cakewalk. So let's move on to our last thing, which is going to be exporting stems. All right, so for exporting stems, I see a couple different reasons why you'd wanna do this. So maybe you wanna send out stems to get mastered as opposed to one full mix. Or maybe you want to send stems out to a remix engineer so you can remix your song. So the way I recommend doing this for selection purposes is to do it the same way you did for individual tracks. And the reason I say that is because we obviously want the engineer to be able to just drop in the tracks and then be perfectly aligned. Now, if we did it the same way that we did for exporting a full song, they would still be aligned, but they wouldn't be aligned to a grid, if that makes sense. So if you were able to give the um, mix engineer or remix engineer the tempo of the song, he can set that up first and then he can drop in the tracks and then they're all gonna line up perfectly on the grid and a remix engineer is definitely gonna want that. So we'll do our selection here. We'll just pick randomly somewhere in the end here and then we will just drag over to measure one. 
And uh, that is all you need to do for your selection. And then we will go to File. And then we'll go down to Export. We'll go to Audio. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to go to um, Buses. Okay, so it's important that you do all of your internal routing first. So this session's older and I've changed the way I do my busing, but um, you would probably want to have something for um, drums, maybe in like a bass bus. Um, you could do potentially just a full music bus if you want, um, but separate bass and drums from it. Vocals definitely separate. You can even break it down further and do vocals and background vocals. And um, I would send the effects um, to those buses also because I used to do a separate FX bus, but when I thought about it, it didn't really make sense. So <laughs> this is just some theory here. I know we're, um, this, you know, tutorial is about actually exporting stuff, but I want to kind of give some theory behind it too to help you guys out. So in my situation here, all I already have is a music bus and a vocal bus. So now I have my music and vocal bus selected, and then I can go through the same process here of selecting stuff. So um, if I was sending these out to get mastered, I would leave them at the same, you know, sampling rate and bit depth as session. So that's already set up. I would have no dithering. And then I would leave all of my effects on because I want them to be part of the mix because essentially the mastering engineer is just going to go in and more so volume balance them and then maybe do some EQ, but he's not obviously not going to recreate the effects for you. <laughs> so you want all those applied. Same if you were sending it out for a remix engineer. Um, you may want to turn off the effects in your session if you want him to apply them, you know, his own way. If Because essentially re remix engineers kind of doing their own creation. So that's your decision. I can't tell you what to do for that. Um, and then, of course, you would just go up here, select where you want to save it to, give it a name, say my stems. And then you'll hit export. And then it tells you here, hey, these are going to be the two files created here. And if you hit OK, you can proceed and that will export your stems. So that is pretty much all the export options that I believe are important to Cakewalk. Um, I'm going to give you a few bonus tips here now. All right, so I got two bonus tips for you. And they're pretty basic, but I feel like they're useful. So the first one being in the top left corner here, you have the export shortcut. So if you click on this here, you get an option for audio formats here, other, which would be OMF, presets, and then advanced will actually open the window that we've been working in here. And uh, we've been doing selection, so I would click this here and then it will be the same way we've been doing it throughout the tutorial. So one other thing in here is also BandLab. If you click on this here, um, I believe this will publish it to BandLab because BandLab has some sort of cloud. Um, don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what it's for. So we cancel out of that. And then our final tip here is that you want to enable 2X. So this is going to be upsampling for all your plugins. And you have a couple different ways you can apply that. So if I was to open my drum folder here, uh, I don't know what's got an effect on it here. I guess I can actually see them over here. Let me bring over my console view. So my console view here. If I open up um, Virtual Mix Rack here by Slate, in the top left corner of every plugin here, you have this little thing that says FX. So if you click on that, you have some options at the bottom. So what we want to do is to upsample on render. We don't really care about playback. So you want to check that, and then you'll see that it is enabled. And I believe you have to do it for every type of plugin. Um, Let's check that out to make sure. So I'll go to Infinity EQ here. Click up here. Yeah, so um, you're gonna have to do it for each specific plugin. So if I do upsample and render here, this tells me that probably all my other Infinity EQs should be matching up with that. So let's confirm that. So I didn't do this one here, but it should match up. Yep. So just keep that in mind. You do have to do that for every specific plugin. Kind of annoying, but <laughs> you need to do it. So let me move away from this window. So with that enabled, 
on each specific plugin, and then the 2x enabled here, when you export your audio, it's going to upsample all of your plugins as it's exporting. And what that means is that there's some issues sometimes when plugins are running in sessions that are like 44.1 or 44.8. Um, to our ears, we don't really hear it. But what this does, this little algorithm they have, it upsamples it up to like, I think it just doubles it. So if it's 44.1, it goes to like, what is that, uh, 88. And then um, if it's 48, then it goes to 96. And then that's how it's processed. But then, of course, it goes back down to 44 and 1. So it's basically like band-aiding a problem. Um, I don't want to call it a band-aid because it's actually really cool. Um, Cakewalk, to my knowledge, is the only doll that has this. And I've not used every doll out there. But uh, I really love this feature in here. And I remember it was added um, when this was Cakewalk Sonar. I remember when it came through. And it was um, a really nice feature. And I feel like I did hear a little bit of a quality difference when I enabled this. Um, very subtle, and of course, it's more noticeable on really nice speakers, but um, yeah, great feature. So those are all of the ways to export audio MIDI within Cakewalk with a few bonus tips in there. So I hope you guys liked this tutorial. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.